Welcome to the Chico Crit. This race got really, really intense. My coach Tyler Williams was there to race. This is my first time racing a sanction race against him. And well, I must say, it did hurt. Also, I am a podium away from getting my Cat 1, which is the final amateur upgrade you can receive here in the United States. So let's see, can I do it? Let's run it. So before we dive into this video about the Chico Crit, we have something else we need to discuss. And by we, I mean, yes, we, you and I, people I'm looking at right now, we got called out by another cycling influencer. Because you're gonna see a bunch of influencers post about this giveaway, including EJ Trains. And the last thing I want is one of his followers to win this stuff when it should be one of you. So yes, there is a huge giveaway, the biggest cycling giveaway going on ever. But since our good friend Mitch Boyer made his video first, I'll just clip in his amazing animation skills and show you. Thanks for making my life a little bit easier, Mitch. Don't be distracted by my amazing animation skills. This is real. It's the biggest cycling giveaway ever. All of this, including a second bike, is gonna go to one person, and I want it to be one of you. So sign up for the giveaway in the link down below in the top of the description. But hold up, because Mitch called us out, I thought, why not up the stakes a little bit? Let's have a little bit of fun, because I think one of you should win, not one of Mitch's followers. So Mitch, I'm calling you out. How about we add some stakes on top of this? Your followers versus my followers. If one of my followers wins, I get to draw you a route from your back door, and you have to complete it, up to 100 miles. All you have to do is post an Instagram story saying that you did it and make sure that ride is on Strava. We're making the deliverables easy for you so it fits into your content schedule. As a cycling influencer with a small amount of talent, I'm constantly turning down offers for free product. Get out of here. And a lot of it is good stuff, I just don't have space to fit it into my content schedule. Oh, and I get to choose the Strava title. And if one of your followers wins, you get to do the same to me. I'll be sure to add a bunch of those steep streets that you like to your ride. So be sure to go sign up for the giveaway, link is down in the description below. Let's get back into the video. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got out of the way, let's talk about this crit race. The course is a sweet six corner crit in downtown Chico in Northern California. In years prior, this race was actually a proper stage race at a national level. A bunch of hitters would show up. There was a road race and a TT, and they're hoping to bring that back for next year. So I really, really hope that they do bring that back and get it up and running because Honestly, that sounds wicked fun. You can sign up for this race on Bike Reg, and they also do have a website, so I urge you to check it out. So going into this race, I needed a podium to get my Cat 1. Did I achieve this goal of going from couch to Cat 1 in a year? Well, if I podium this crit, then almost. February 19th, 2023 was my first ever, my first ever road race. It's been an absolutely crazy journey, and a lot of this journey, honestly, is thanks to you guys and your support, which allows me to keep this journey going, making these videos, and so on and so forth. So, thank you guys. But, yes, this Chico Crit was on March 10th, so February 19th to March 10th. That's not quite a year, and like I said, if I podium, it would take me a bit over a calendar year, but close enough. I definitely had upgrade points on my mind going into this race. It was a small field because unfortunately they didn't do a great job promoting this race because it all came into fruition pretty late. But we will talk more about that later. Our field had roughly 30 riders in it and the upgrade points in the US scale with field size. So again, we were searching for that podium. The field was still full of talent though. Like I said in the intro, our coach and previous runner up at the road race nationals here in the United States, Tyler Williams was here, Blake Macheris, Andrew Matheson, my teammate Jeffrey, Tarun, these guys here in pink, they had three riders. It was gonna be a fun race and it was going to be really dynamic because of that small field size. Okay, now let's head to the race and hear Tyler's thoughts and plan for this race. Plan for the race, well, I have a feeling EJ is going to follow me around, whatever I do. So, hopefully I can catch him sleeping at some point. Or, yeah, I don't know. Just like, it's just, I, I know how to win my races, so it's like control the, the variables as best I can and make it hard. And then, hopefully put myself in a good position to win out of a sprint or the group. I wish that more people from NorCal would have come out to it, because it's pretty sweet. It's probably one of the better courses that we have in an 
nice location. Um, but yeah, I'm glad it's back and it'll be fun. Okay, so you just heard Tyler's plan. You got Tyler's like adopted children right here. You got Andrew, <laughs> got Blake. We're like we're represented for Santa Rosa, and I mean obviously we're not we're not racing on the same team. But if it happens that we get in a break together, I think we're gonna you know <laughs> maybe try to work Tyler over a little bit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens. My plan today is Blake and I were talking about this in the car. Gonna race it like a TNT. Just have fun, throw some attacks. I want to try to get in a break today. And uh, yeah, just see what happens. Blake, what's your plan? You know, um, perfect race, like 25 people that just go out there and uh, send a bunch of attacks. Nothing else going on this weekend. Daylight saving, so we're all tired. And uh, yeah, just throw a bunch of attacks, a bunch of watts, and uh, yeah, that's right. about it. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, what you got for us, Sean? Uh, I don't know. I, I'll just do it by feel. I might. I might try to follow some things, but I don't think I'm going to initiate anything today. Speaking of attack, our buddy Andrew Matheson, how, who you've seen early in this video, goes up the road here. Hi, and Alyssa, what are you doing today? My plan is to just stay warm. <laughs> what are you on right now, Ethan <laughs> Jones? The race was honestly super cool with, with a really, really cool vibe. We will get into the ratings later in the video, but let's dive into the race breakdown. Tyler was nice enough to take time out of his busy training schedule to talk through the race with me. It was honestly really cool to sit down and hear what such an accomplished rider is thinking in different moments throughout the race. So let's dive into it. All right, here we go. We are lined up. The whistle's about to go off at the Chico stage race, crit. I guess hopefully they're going to bring back the stage race for next year. For you guys that don't know, this used to be a stage race. Tyler, you've raced a stage race, right? I've been stage race twice. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It's sick. Hopefully, hopefully they bring it back. They've been talking about it, but we're off, dude. What is your plan for this race? Well, it's kind of the same as, as always where I'm just trying to control. I know that everything is going to be on me to, to keep it together or, or to make the race happen. So I just want to control my odds as best I can. Luckily there wasn't any, big teams per se so i kind of knew that i had to just follow you and your teammate uh and between the two of us we were gonna be strong enough to kind of like hold it together definitely yeah no this this race was unfortunately they didn't get big reg for this race which i'm sure we already talked about earlier in this video it's a 22 person field which i actually want your take does that make a race harder or easier it kind of depends on the composition what do you think uh it's harder to like anticipate the race i think um and again because and i can't for someone like me i can can't rely on as many people to like race their bikes because everyone it's easier for everyone just to kind of focus on me so it'd be like doing like almost like a group ride where it's just like okay we're just gonna follow tyler around <laughs> yeah for you guys that don't know i mean a lot of you are familiar with tyler at this point but quote-unquote pro cyclist racing in a local race a lot of that um you know a lot of people do look at him to cover attack stuff like that but speaking of attack our buddy andrew matheson how, who you've seen early in this video goes up the road here what do you think about this move well it was early so uh you know it was it was early to go it was a good move like in in fairness to andrew he did like some of his best i coach andrew so uh he did some of his best ever power on this attack so i was like happy that he committed like he did but it was lap one of an hour so and the problem with this course was actually the wind was probably like the opposite of making it uh, a hard race where that long home straight was block headwind this little section here is tailwind so it wasn't um that conducive i guess to like an attacking race it was fairly easy to sit in the wheels um but i mean he was out there for for a long time it was just as long as we kept the speed up enough to where yeah he didn't get like he didn't lap essentially we i knew he would come, he would eventually just like the race would bring him back for sure and speaking of the race let's hop forward and see what else happens so here we are a couple laps later andrew's still off the front and if you see on the left here tyler sends one that <laughs> makes us all see pretty cross-eyed tyler what were you thinking here well i was proud of myself 
actually for having already sat in for seven laps so that was an accomplishment for me um i was just trying to allow the race to develop and people to get involved i guess in a way um i wasn't overly worried about the gap that andrew had but then kind of just felt like the moments i kind of like tried to switch the race on a bit here and yeah i mean i think blake was like on me straight away and then you countered over the top and this was like kind of the hardest thing was one of us were always countering the other which probably in some ways again like negated the aggression uh because one of us was always going close to the other so yeah but like and it kept it you get a pretty good, good gap here that i think i have to eventually bring it back um so and these kind of moves are what were also keeping andrew in check because while he was out there riding a steady sp speed we were going we would go super 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 fast and we would we could you know see him and it would it would come back pretty quickly i think you can see him up there in the distance already yeah so he wasn't out of sight out of mind at this point but when do you realize do you do you have a moment usually in a race where it clicks like okay this might be a field sprint or i'm going to kind of shred this this field apart because you usually win from longer out that's where you found most of your success correct me if i'm wrong but do you have a moment where you're kind of like your game plan switches or do you have a game plan going in like what were you thinking at this moment uh right now i was still hoping to get it reduced to a small group um i didn't expect to be able to like get alone on a course like this but like again like controlling the odds so at least get it down to like four or five ish guys so you being there but like a com group that i feel comfortable sprinting in the the um aggression is a little easier to control um at one point later in the video you'll see like i i kind of commit really hard for a lap and we do kind of get that separation down to the like six man group but it doesn't stick and then from there i knew it was a, it was a field sprint definitely okay that's good enough with that let's fast forward okay we're picking it up a couple laps later tyler's absolutely sending it but it is for a reason it's for a preem so what's going on here so there's 50 bucks on the line uh <laughs> and also i was testing i was pretty sure you needed to be first out of the corner to win the sprint so it was a little bit of a test um and yeah i just like i mean i basically jumped into the corner to just kind of get a little bit of a feel um for that effort and how long it would feel and then like basically you can see like i sit up already like 20 30 meters before the line to try to save some legs um but another thing that personally i need to work on is i'm fairly lazy as far as going for preems in the mid race but now being with the ncl that's how the races happen so i just need to like kind of try and it's also me practicing switching my brain on to do these big sprints in the middle of races for points or money or whatever and then blake you see uh what just happened was he countered the preem and yeah he gets now he's basically kind of an andrew seat of like alone again which is not ideal on a course like this with still over well over half the race to go um but he he the race allowed it to go kind of as you can see everyone's just sitting behind me so okay so now we have officially ticked over halfway you can see on the laps there on the top right of the screen and this Tayroon guy sits up kind of lets his teammate in blue float up the road and i just <laughs> i just send out i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't really gonna have it um i wish i knew that i had this big of a gap looking back um, it's always funny to like rewatch this footage and see how big the gaps are and stuff like that. But I was down to commit a little bit, a little bit of energy to this move, try to make the little the race a little bit harder. My plan going in was try to get the group reduced, kind of like what Tyler talked about earlier. I mean, you guys saw that in the pre-race footage. But yeah, it really wasn't going to plan, and I don't quite have that race knowledge or switch that Tyler talked about yet. Still working on that part where it's like okay. I know this might come down to a field sprint or something like that. But as you can see, Tyler's on the front and the rear camera already bringing it back in. And, uh, yeah, Tyler, how are you feeling? Well, again, it's not me chasing down EJ because it's EJ, but I have to – I know that he's the other strong guy in the race, like the other strongest person who could roll a breakaway. So I don't want him to get to Blake because then that's two strong guys up, up the road. Um so I have to make sure that I'm with him when he goes across. Also, EJ has a strong teammate as well. So I have to make sure I'm with them. And then because it was hard, his attack was hard and I had been going, I did like kind of like one of the like cardinal sins of like attacking from like first wheel basically right here. But I felt like the race was already quite hard. So I just wanted to really give it like a real rip and see if I could snap it a bit. Um, so, yeah, we kind of like I kind of give it like a lap burner basically here. Um, to see if 
and you can kind of see in the rear cam there it's like starting to, to snap a little bit I'm kind of weaving to help like try to keep people from getting draft a little bit and just like kind of keep everyone turning because if you're turning it's you're not resting essentially um, and yeah so I just like kind of put the hammer down for a lap just to kind of see and also this pretty much evaporates whatever uh, gap uh, Blake had which kind of yeah see that guy's suffering and Andrew man all my clients are so strong um, <laughs> closes, closes the gap to me um, <laughs> and uh, yeah which is awesome like again he was he was really astute to like hop cl know that he needed to close that um, because had that happened you were already kind of redlined from having done your attack that I countered so um, and so to, to that point like maybe if I had if if you hadn't done that and I hadn't countered you and you had just been able to follow the wheel when I did this then when I kind of am coming off the gas which I'm doing kind of right here a bit um, you would have had maybe a little bit more in the tank to because you're I mean you're 180 so that's like kind of your max um, you would have had a little bit more in the tank to like help push this away because there's only I think six ish guys i remember looking back and it was like kind of round six so andrew i mean andrew did a great turn right here um and he keeps the gas on a bit and yeah i think there was like maybe six seven left um but i mean here you kind of see his steam is coming off a bit and then you're still redlined so you don't have a ton to keep pushing it um so it was really good at bringing blake back but like the gap was only like five seconds to the rest of the group so they kind of like closed it through here as soon as we sit up a bit yeah, definitely. I mean, if like you said, if I'd kept the steam on here, maybe we could have created something. But yeah, it definitely it definitely helped us uh, close our strong friend Blake up the road. So let's fast forward and see what else happens. So we are coming into three to go. Tyler's closing down another gap. There's two guys up the road, and uh, yeah, you pull off here. What happened? So I had uh, one of these corners had like a small lip in it when you go over the sidewalk and. I'm pretty sure at some point during the race I just slightly cut the sidewall so it was like a really slow leak but it was squishy and I was chasing those guys down and I was like hmm, it kind of feels a little little sloppy going into one of the corners uh, and I hopped on it and it was it was just like just barely touching rim and so I kind of spent like two turns contemplating like hmm, do I send it and uh, just like try to keep the weight on the front of the bike and then I was like that's a really dumb 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 idea uh, for a race that has no bearing on my season. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I flatted and it was after free laps and that was, that was race over for me. Exactly. And honestly, we just talked about this. I was saying, I didn't really know what he was doing, but I kind of put two and two together going to the last lap. So let's hop forward there and see how this plays out. Going into the last lap. I want you to talk about this. You told me this at the car. You thought Blake was going to win because he was in really good position. So tell us what's going on. So I didn't expect this move to happen here, but I thought Blake was sitting great when third, fourth wheel. Um, then this move happens, and you just, we just, I hadn't really seen this until right now, but you let that guy just <laughs> go in. <laughs> and, uh, and then your teammate kind of skips his chain a bit, but that hesitation, I mean, you, you were on the wheel, and I think, like, coming into the last lap, someone's going with, I mean, it's 600 meters to go, and, like, we kind of established, like, it was you could have led obviously into these little t this little tight section of the course and that would have set you up fine um to i mean you're in the good position if you were riding the field sprint you just let that guy have a gap so you could have been in that guy's wheel and then kind of finessed it which is hard it takes a lot of experience and a little bit of just like instinct to do um but yeah it was just so hard to close because you're turning so much of that course and he attacked into a tailwind so everyone was doing the same effort you weren't really gaining much from being in your teammate's draft and yeah he just timed it super well you hesitated a bit and i mean that's what it takes in a crit. yeah exactly but you know what we live and we learn happy with second place i can't lie but i definitely would have liked to win so good move on you matt on tayroon shout out but yeah, dude, that was uh, that was an awesome race. Thanks for thanks for coming to record and telling everyone your thoughts. Yeah, uh, hopefully we have a stage race to talk about next year. Heck yeah! Shout out you, Chico Stage Race. What a spicy and fun race that was. Honestly, an absolute blast. I will pop my power numbers up on the screen right here for you guys. But I did in fact get my cat one. I didn't win, but I do have to say 
I am still so stoked with the result for this race. I'm happy with how I raced. I know there is still a ton that I need to work on, but to be done with upgrade points does honestly feel really, really good. It took a bit longer than a year, so sorry to y'all that really wanted that couch to cat one in under a year, but hey, we made it. As for the ratings for this race, if you're new here, we rate each race we go to on five things. The vibe, the course, the field, the promotion, and the accessibility. The vibe was a solid nine, in my opinion. Having a bar on the back straight that was popping, tons of people cheering in there, and the town center was also popping with those guys doing jumps on the BMX bikes and dirt jumpers. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. The course was also really, really fun. I really liked it. I'd give it a seven. The field was a five just because of the lower reg numbers. The promotion was a 3.5 if I'm being honest, but I know it was a last minute thing to get this race on, so I totally understand. And again, all these ratings are personal opinions, so take it with a grain of salt. I, I just don't think a lot of people knew that this race was actually happening because it got canceled for the last three years and was kind of on again, off again. So again, a 3.5. The accessibility was an 8.5 in my eyes. Lots of bathroom, tons of parking, lots of food that was literally like on the course. The taqueria that we went to after the race was on the course. It was really, really good. I really hope they do bring back the stage race for next year because from what Tyler was telling me, the race absolutely pops. It could be a lot of fun. Or if they just end up doing a crit, I think if they have more time to put the effort in to nail the promotion and get more people out there, this could be a banger of an event. Also, if y'all wouldn't mind subbing to the second channel, EJ Races Bikes, that would be awesome. We're closing in on a thousand subscribers over there. I just think that'd be really cool. I just love making content and having a place to give you guys more content. Yeah, I don't know. I really enjoy that. We have some fun content that we filmed in the last couple days that's going to roll out over there. So you're not going to want to miss it. But thank you guys so much for your support as always. We will see you in the next one. Peace.